were accused, I think rightfully so, of plagiarism. If I was going to steal, I would have at least changed around the sh don't you think? So you're making the argument, I didn't do it because I would have done because it better? Because I'm sick of it. Man, I'm just man. sick of Boogie, You gotta just stop letting sick. people cancel you, Boogie. Yeah, because you're an idiot. So Billy says he, he's got his scores reinstated, which is on its face a Holy lie. how autistic are these people? For the love of God, who gives a about a video game score for you do. Donkey Kong? You do. No, you not nerd. Donkey Kong. You. I've seen people like 16, 17 trying to get into the army at that yeah, point. Trying to get in. Nowadays, I don't think you Why do would you want to get in that Like, dude, like World War One was vicious i tell you what i would have been i would have been a fucking traitor son you put me yeah, in the brig yeah, I, I am that. not running i, can see <laughs> I fake shit all the time i really want people to understand i don't believe that, that. for yes. a word i think it's a yes, cop I'm out for idiot. being a yes i lost a shitload of cop. my money in crypto yes i'm a You're mentally a ill idiot. those things cop. are all Yo, true so much of this sh the lol cow podcast Hey everybody, welcome to the podcast episode of Lol Cow Live. I'm here with Boogie2988 and Wings of Redemption coming off a killer stream with Keemstar. Do, do we want to touch on that, uh, boys? Did you, Trap Daddy, leave those messages on Reddit, the Lol Cow Reddit, that you, in fact, are in the DMs with Boogie's girlfriend kicking game? Yes, I did, and I am. So it didn't take much, man. It didn't take much other than complimenting her, telling her, you know, trying to relate to her, telling her that I'm, you know, going through bad things like she is too. And I understand how yeah. she is Whoa, and she doesn't belong in this big out, crazy time world. Out, Boogie. He might be telling the truth. He trauma bound no, it not. with her. I figure it, it, it goes by step, guys. So first you started, you start commenting on a girl's page. She starts, you know, liking your shit. You like her shit. You DM each other. You might take that to Snapchat. You might take Snapchat to text, which it was going there. And then, yeah, so we started Snapchatting each other. The Snapchat started off PG, PG-13. Yeah, I, I don't mind talking about it. I, I, I've I got some updates for everybody if you want to hear about it. Yeah, I'd love to hear. Yeah, so uh, last night I reached out to Trap um, because I talked to Desi uh, about everything. And I wanted to see what was real and what wasn't. And then I thought, I'm going to slide into Trap's DMs to confirm whether or not it was real or not. And so here's how everything basically played down. And Trap confirmed it for me, okay? He tried to manipulate a 20-year-old girl to try to get a fight with me. And he said that on the live stream. That's basically what it came down to. And so he, um, he hit up my girl, and he went in with every in. He, he's like, oh, I have trauma in my past, too. I'm getting better, whatever. He talked about the marijuana and shit like that. And here's the thing. I was confused last night about which specific scumbag this was because a lot of people hit my girl up. She don't add none of them. She talked to me about adding these guys. She said, there's a married couple that smokes weed. I want a smoking buddy to talk to. And I figure if they're a married couple, they're probably not going to do anything wrong. So I just put it out of my mind after that, right? Well, it turns out almost immediately, this guy starts trying to manipulate her and start, try to start trying to talk to her and he's saying things like oh wouldn't you like to have a three way with my wife and she would leave him on red every single time there's two times where he brought that shit up and she was like uh lol you know shit like that like just trying to uncomfortably get rid of it and then two weeks ago she dropped his ass because he she he wasn't being a smoking buddy he was just being a manipulator trying to get a fight with us uh and this is that that's not how you get a fight with me son that's just you know the way you get a fight with me, the way you get a fight with Jordy, is you got to be able to bring money to the table. I need to get paid. Jordy well, needs to What do you paid. mean? He, he, got risk. Risk. he got on the he got on the uh, stream, Boogie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah he right got on the stream. Boat. So his, his clout's up, and I'm okay with that. We also had a really entertaining episode. Yes. But I, I thought it was cool that he came into the uh, my chat and told me the reality of it. Uh, he never got, he didn't, he lied about getting nudes. There was no nudes. Uh, he, he admitted that. He admitted to to I just, I don't know he's just a cloud chaser and that's okay that's fine I appreciate him talking to me about the stuff I appreciate him setting it straight but his story corroborates with Desi's story and uh, you know he shot a shot and I'll be honest with you and I don't want to talk too much of his shit but honestly I hope maybe Keemstar gives him a fight one day after talking to him for a little bit last night because I think he's an entertaining person I think he could be an entertaining fighter. Um, I don't think I'm in a position where I could fight him. I don't know if Jordy is or not, but I'd like to see the guy fight somebody. Oh, know? well, I got some information on that because he is supposed to fight a guy named Nigel Nose, the guy I follow on Twitter, and he backed out for mental health reasons like an hour before the fight. What? Wow. I didn't know that's sad. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll link it right here to you. We we link we can send it to Connor as well. But like, yeah, Nigel yeah. knows that he's a he's a TikTok guy, and he was supposed to fight him in Las Vegas, and he backed out. There's DMs, there's video of like the weigh in and everything like that. But like, he came to me this morning. I was doing I was doing like a, a dumbass Doom stream, and he wanted he's like, fight me, fight me, bro, fight me, and he like donated ten dollars. I'm like, dog, you don't need to be donating money to me if your wife's out here fucking dying. Just put put that money towards her. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and like he wants to have one last fight because his daughter, I don't remember what she died of, but his daughter passed on at the age of four, and he promised her that he'd fight for, her and he wants to have one good last fight. But I ain't UNICEF. I don't fight yeah, for free. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You. Yeah. At the end of the day, all it comes down to is he's just got to give us. I had an idea. He don't got to pay I, us, but he's got to no. find somebody that's willing to pay me to fight him. You might so not I, be UNICEF, but you're both cancer, so maybe that's why he wants to be your <laughs> I I have an <laughs> I have an idea. Fuck you, Tommy. I have an idea <laughs> for a way for this fight to happen. I pitched in the little in the chat. I'm curious what the audience thinks about this. We have talked about doing a live show for the podcast. People can come in and they can pay money and they can uh, pay at the door and watch us film an episode live and maybe we get a cool guest. But I also thought Keemstar owns Happy Punch. He knows how to rent a ring. He knows how to certify all this stuff. We could also follow that up with a fight. I don't know who this guy fights, right? But if we if he gets the hell beat out of him after our podcast or before our podcast, that's going to put more butts in seats. And then on top of that, we all get a bigger cut of the door and he can have some of it too. Right. I would even be cool to do it for charity. Like, like everybody gets like, like you obviously have a, you have a door and it pays for the ring and everything, but I'd fight it for charity. Like if, if whatever the fight made after, after make breaking even. Yeah. I mean, I would like to see, you know, because of his wife's situation and all that stuff, I would like to see him. What exactly? I missed that part. I, I, I did have to skim guys. I do apologize, but it was a great episode. I saw you guys fighting. <laughs> Um, what's, what's the thing? What's the tragic thing? What's like the, yeah, he didn't thing? bring it up on the episode. So I, but he, I guess he brought it up with you, Jordy, right? And, yeah. He brought, it with about me, it today. He, he brought it with me. Like he wants to fight somebody because he promised his daughter who passed away from a disease. I don't remember what it was, but she was like four and his wife is currently battling a life threatening disease and they have a GoFundMe going and he's just trying to get cloud out there to try to get fights because he promised his daughter he 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 dedicate a fight to her and stuff like that. I don't know why he wants might to come be, to me. You think this might be one of your trolls that's screwing with you? I mean, he's no, no, he's, he's legit. Like, he, like he's, he's, he's legit. Yeah, like if you look All in right. the text chat here, like this is like I said, he he had a fight with Nigel Nose, and oh, he backed out of it. Oh, that second link. Yeah, it makes you think he won't do the same thing you guys. You know. I I, I didn't say he. Would, <laughs> I don't know what where his where he's mentally at. It's easy to talk. Shit until you're actually staring in front of somebody. Like, the closer yeah, it gets, yeah. the yeah, more it right messes there. with your mind. Yeah, I, I don't think that fight will ever happen. I'll be honest with you right now. And then there's my guy that wanted to fight me. He said he's going to come to my house and beat my ass on my front lawn. How about this? How about I just come down to your house and fight you on your front lawn? If you want to bring that, you can. Yeah. Let's go. I'd like to see you take it away. I would not do that. I'd like to see that happen. All I need, all I need, is your okay for it, and then I don't have to have any problems with South Carolina law with showing up at your house and beating your on the front lawn bare fisted. Mm-hmm. Dude, you talk a big game for somebody that sounds like he sucks. Helium. I'm from New Mother <laughs> Jersey. Try me. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> was that? morning what after was that? kill like th this uh, guy is the, called the shoe baron because apparently he rents a room in the shoe locker or some because like all he has is fucking shoes like, he has shoes and marijuana i know what he doesn't have conditioning this motherfucker punched the wall for 20 <laughs> seconds solid and he was gassed all right here yeah. we go here we go here we go oh shit. Okay, what? Well, five, four. Look at those little T Rex three, arms. Two, one, and gassed. <laughs> oh, shit, he's got a little bit left on the tank. Oh, man. He, he's going to come over here fucking sweating again. He's going to have some sweat in his brow. <laughs> and I'm like, dog, the wall didn't hit back. <laughs> uh, 
My, you know, my favorite part about that guy is uh, he has the exact voice. People thought I was making fun of his lisp, and I am a little bit, but I'm mostly talking Probably about not. the fact that he sucks like he's, uh, it sounds like he sucked down a, a gallon of helium before he started talking. <laughs> and then he's like the pothead, and he's fat as hell, and he's got the game collection behind him, and he's all, he sounds like Francis. Like that, the, uh, everybody knows by now that my character Francis was designed to make fun of people like me when I was 20, and also people exactly like him. I think it's wild that he watched a Francis video at one point and said, that's who I'm going to be. For the rest of my life, I'm going to act like that have you, guy. Have you ever I'm heard Morning After like Kill talk, Tommy? Uh, I, I I didn't notice that. that He had a weird voice, but I didn't notice that prominent of a, a lisp. Yeah, I, I, I didn't either. But, you know. but it's it's a little bit like, uh, Wings, I'm going to come to your house and I'm going to beat you up on your lawn. <laughs> it's like, it's 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 hysterical. I, I think you guys are falling. I still think you guys are falling for a troll. He's walked away. He managed to weasel his way into your in, into your girlfriend's DMs yeah. just to do the whole thing. He said he was like doing stuff with her, getting news or something. Like that turned out all to be BS, right? Yeah, yeah, that's all BS. It, it's all so BS, let but me, it's good entertainment. So it's all BS. So I, I maybe he's just trolling the f*** out of you guys. And I got to be honest with you, uh, you know, a lot of the reason we're here today, gentlemen, is you guys get trolled. Yeah, that's am I true. crazy? Hey, okay. yeah, but at least, I, I, but Tommy, give us credit for this. At least we found a way to entertain people while getting trapped. Well, you can fight them. I'll give you credit for that. <laughs> yeah, also, you know, you, you're willing to fight these guys. I mean, that, yeah. that well, I am. Says, Boogie's not. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't. I, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. This is what I told Trap last night. With the current state of things, uh, until I get some weight off of me and get my red blood cell count, there's no commission in the world that's going to sign off of me right now. I, I can but tell you, I get I my can red tell you right now, like after watching cool. Morning After Kill can hit that wall, I have less fear of him than I do a random dog on the fucking street. Yeah. Like, like I, I'm, more, I was more afraid of Boogie. I'd be more afraid of a Boogie rematch than fighting him at this point because, like, he has yeah, I, I, for, no talent. For for Wings' as troll, uh, I, I I would be willing to put uh, Desi in that ring because she ain't well, but, even get hurt. Boogie's pants fell off. How could you possibly <laughs> be afraid of a rematch? <laughs> and I'm still so mad that that didn't go viral because I grew up on Nintendo. I grew up on Punch Out. I grew up King on Hippo. King Hippo. Mm. How did that not get me? You know what the funny oh. thing is? I didn't really talk to Boogie much <laughs> during the like preparation for that fight because I didn't want people to be like, oh, the fight's rigged because the fight was not rigged at 100%. I don't believe that. It wasn't rigged at all. But no, like, there were certain, certain things that if, I, if that if that fight's rigged, King's putting himself in legal jail. Yeah, yeah, there were yeah, certain so things that me and Boogie that. had to talk to each other about because we had a unique problem that only me and Boogie ever had. Yeah, like being four hundred pounds and trying to cup. have a boxing match. Yeah, yeah. So we had to he figure out a video ring, game. We, right. we had to fix ring attire games, and stuff like that. And like I told Boogie, don't wait on your shorts; they're going to have to be fixed. And he did. Yep. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I didn't know where else to go and I didn't know where to get anything shorter. So I was like, I'll get them and then I'll take them to London and get them fixed there. That's the closest I can do. And that's what we ended up having to do. You know, I will say um, there's one way that the fight was a little tiny bit fixed. And it's only because Wings was clearly going to be out of me right like he's he's younger he's faster he's healthier he's not disabled i mean there was no other way that was gonna he was Boogie, going to no, win not, the fight that's not being know, fixed but, but, but i'm gonna ask you a question i gotta ask you a question just me stroking my ego a little bit at what point after meeting me did you know you were in trouble Oh, immediately, as soon as I saw, I saw how tall you were. And then the second thing I did was I tried to gauge your uh, reach, and I realized that unless I could lunge, and I can't because of my you fused back, unless I could lunge, there was no way I was going to land to hit. I couldn't get through you. So I was just like, I'm done. I'm done. You know, I knew so I, that's knew, why, I, I, knew that's I had why, you as soon as you walked up the stairs. I'm like, good Lord. Yeah. That's that's why the interviews I tried to go so hard and so entertaining and the press conference that's why I tried to go so hard and entertaining because I knew the fight wasn't going to be that entertaining. <laughs> I was no, entertaining. I, I would disagree. I, gonna... I think it was the best one on the card. <laughs> I, did, I, I think you're too, right. Actually. I agree with you there. I think um, this is one of the only fight I wanted to see. Uh, I'm just I'm I'm, I'm kind of done with the celebrity fight. I, I like I think there should be just more goofy fights like you. They're they're the ones that interest me personally. Yeah. So you're yeah, not going to show up to the next Jake Paul fight. I, I'm not. I am. I'm just asking, like, 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 like. There was a period where I actually followed Jake Paul, but like, he's a legit boxer now. Like at this yeah, point yeah, in his agree. career, he's a legit boxer. Like he's Absolutely. he's actually beaten. Like, I don't want to call the guy a tomato can because the guy could whoop my. Ass. That's like usually like my rule of thumb. But like, in <laughs> all sense of the word, he's a tomato can. <laughs> like if Jake Paul's knocking you out in the first round, you got some shit to work on. 
I knew Wings is going to win the fight, going back to what you were saying before, because I figured, I just put Wings in the hand. I You played sports in I high school? Baseball, Not competitively, yeah. maybe, but you, oh, you played baseball? That's yeah, why. Played baseball. How many sports did you play growing up, Boogie? I played football. I mean, Little League. You played football. I was actually on the team, though, Boogie. I didn't like, play with my friends. I was actually on the team, but it was junior varsity. It was the one you I were JV? On. Yeah. Junior varsity year, high school or JV uh, middle school? Uh, high school. And then uh, when I moved over to. Yeah, actually, I do. You want to see it real quick? I'll go get it. I saw a video that in middle school that you were pretty like the best athlete in school uh, or at least in your class. And then some guy, some foreign guy came in and whipped your ass or something like that. Not whipped your ass, like yeah, the athlete. Brian and then you, threw, Boyd. You, then you threw in the towel and then started getting into video games. Is no, that true? No, 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 no. no. Wait, Brian Boyd is this guy's name. I don't know where he is now. I don't know what he's doing. But like I was easily the alpha male in my class. I was the best in sports. I was the smartest kid, blah, 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 blah. blah. I was skinny too. Like I was normal weight height mm -hmm. and i didn't have really good parents growing up i was just raised by my grandparents mm -hmm. and they 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 did the basics right they're old school but they like brian <laughs> brian boyd came in and he came in from another plan and he was bigger faster and stronger than me he was he run faster than me he was stronger than me i couldn't tackle him in football so like my me with like a, a sixth grade in education decided i need to get bigger and how do you get bigger you get bigger by eating all your food <laughs> so I would actually eat more cereal and I'd eat more. I'd go for and seconds nobody at told dinner. me that was stupid. No, nope. nobody my, told me. No, no, my grandparents didn't tell me. They're like, oh, if you want more, buddy, go get it. And like, that's how I started down the road of being fat as fuck. Like, I, I just started ballooning up. By the time I was in like seventh, eighth grade, I was like 200 pounds. Damn. I didn't get bigger and faster. I got slower and less energy. Say, so, hey, Tommy, real quick. Here's me as a little kid. Uh, here's me as a really little kid. Here's me in football, JV, dressed out, that? number 51 there. Again, another kid, kid, kid photo, kid photo. And I'll tell you. Nice. I gotta be honest. I, 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 I wish I could see this. I could just imagine the fucked up teeth in these photos. I played junior varsity for one year, and then they tried to move me over to the varsity team, and I broke my right hand. Um, and that put me out for the season. And then I joined a uh, band, which I was already doing a little bit of band stuff anyway, right? Mm. Uh, and I found out something real interesting about band is that flag girls are freaks, man. Back of the bus on a band trip, the sh those girls will do. Oh my God. And, uh, truth or dare. That was it. They would even let my fat play, you know, my, my, so, my first, my first like serious girlfriend was in the band too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, my, my first girlfriend was a flutist. You know why that is um, though, right? Because like well. the girls jump into band because they don't want to do other shit. Like they're just trying to get out of class for the day. Going to band because they're good students and they're not hot. <laughs> they're 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 mid or like girl next door types. That's oh, you try to so you try to say going to band because like at least they're 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 because you can't go to cheerleading. They're an eight in band because <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to cheerleading. Here, take this flute. <laughs> you know? One hundred and ten percent, actually. So that's true. They they're not they're <laughs> no, not cute I'm enough. Too. They're they're yeah. not cute enough. They're not skinny enough. They're not talented enough to they're be. Not, in, they're not in all the bad. Room, they're know? not like bad, but right. they're not they're not they're not the hot chicks. In fact, all they do is bitch about the chicks that are hot. I think we should move on. Uh, I, I don't want to seem like I'm interrupting you guys because I know the fans no, hate that. Hey, so <laughs> can, we talk, we, can we talk to... about Billy Mitchell for a yes! second? Yes, yes. Was that what you about to say? Yeah. So so okay. It looks like Billy Mitchell uh, has got all of his scores reinstated. Eh. Um, no. Is that correct? No. Okay, hold on. Eh. Let me read the statement. Go ahead. Go read it. Read Jan it out. Yeah. January 16, 2024, statement from Billy Mitchell. Twin okay. Galaxies has reinstated all of the video game world records that <laughs> I achieved in my career effective immediately. Twin Galaxies statement on the website reads, in fair consideration of the expert opinion provided by Dr. Zeta on behalf of Mr. Mitchell and consistent with Twin Galaxies' dedication to the meticulous documentation and preservation of video game scores history holy shit how autistic are these people for the love of god who gives a shit about a video game score you do you donkey do kong. you big no, nerd not you donkey do. kong yes, not do. Do okay uh, he says i'm relieved and satisfied to reach this resolution after an almost six year ordeal and look forward to pursuing my unfinished business elsewhere right, never surrender key, billy mitchell you see what the key word in there though was the key word was history Ooh, you see that yes so Billy says he, he's got his um, scores reinstated, which is on its face a lie. And 
what 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 uh, when he quotes Twin Galaxies that that proves he's a liar, which is pretty funny. That he's they're going to put the scores in historically. So in other words, if you go back to 2012 when nobody knew that Billy Mitchell used Mame to uh, get his score, which is a big controversy. I'm not going into every angle of it. Yeah. Um, so if he was number three at the third highest score at that time, it's there. If you go look up the current leaderboard, he's been t- he's been removed. Wow. So it's a big L. Big L. Big L. Big L. Big L. Was Billy the King of Kong out in 2012? 2006. I was in Iraq. I remember that. I 2006. Because yeah. like I remember watching the King of Kong. Yeah. And like Steve Weeby is like at one of those events, and he like breaks the world record right there with people watching. Yeah. And as soon as he breaks that world record, here comes Billy Mitchell with a VHS. With no sound, by the way. It. That's important. They should have no, known that. Then. You know, with no no sound. And it's like it's like how are you, how are you authenticating this tape with no sound, and nobody watched him play it over the guy that just had people witness him breaking the score on a legit machine. Can you I know? answer that? Like I always, I'm a big yeah. dork. I understand this stuff. Because the rules are you can make submissions in that way. And there was no rule that the sound had to be played. It just has to be seen. Which, actually, it would have spoiled it right away. Because if you play uh, in those versions of Mame back then, um, if when Mario jumped, you didn't hear the jumping sound effect. They didn't have that in unless you had samples in there. So it, had he released it with sound, then the thing wouldn't have counted right there and then. And uh, you know now we also know that Mame draws the uh, pixels different than yep. uh, original arcade, which is just yep. undeniable. So Billy's going to run around and say that he's, uh, his scores have been restated, but they haven't been because what you have to do is like a way back machine. If you check back when he, before they found it was illegitimate, he's listed as leader. If you look at the current one, it's not there. That's, that was the settlement. To keep going yeah, to court. Maybe, and both sides didn't want to go to court, by the way, because they were yeah, they're, I mean, they're about to, in, in some ways, Boogie's right. Like, who cares? These people were willing to destroy themselves financially for this stupid score. <laughs> it was pretty great. I mean, like, look at it. I bet if you bring Tommy Jr. in here, he couldn't give you, tell you who is the top scorer of Donkey Kong right now. Yeah. Like, nobody cares. Like he would say Billy Mitchell. <laughs> yeah. He probably would say Billy Mitchell. because Not only that, it, he might not even know what a Donkey Kong is other than being in the Mario movie. Like, Do you what, see what's what, behind me? so in defense of billy mitchell i'm going to defend billy mitchell okay, okay. i i because I, I i think it's important people know this i go to a lot of conventions i'm going to one uh probably right around the time this airs right um and i i get paid to go to these things they pay for my room my hotel a little bit of room <gasps> diem and stuff gas, whatever. oh excuse me sorry oh me. jesus christ <laughs> anyway uh, so i got to go to one with billy mitchell and uh, he was really uh, cordial to me and everybody else. Even the people that criticized him to his face, he was still cordial to him. But the coolest thing that that man did at Retropalooza, and you can still find this online, I'm fairly certain, he played Pac-Man while talking to other people while live streaming him playing Pac-Man. He talked to me while he was playing Pac-Man. Now, you know what that man managed to do while he was distracted and live streaming and talking to his fans? He kill screened pac-man right there in front of me yeah that's a thing i saw him do it is undeniable that billy mitchell is good at video games but but but, but yeah i I would agree with that but all the best players cheat all the best players cheat like like you could look any kind of cheating is not going to help me against wings right in a a call of duty match yeah it only really works like it's it's when the top it's the tip top guys that cheat it's when when you're you're good it's like barry bonds yeah, it's when like you're Barry good. Bonds was first ballot Hall of Famer before he took steroids. Exactly. What about Todd Rogers? I know this isn't Billy Mitchell. Todd like, Rogers is in a trail, trailer falling. and he can't sue anybody. <laughs> I'm just saying, because like from my understanding, Todd Rogers just made shit up his whole fucking career and just claimed he was good. But he at was video also games. no, but he did the same thing. He was also good. He could also do a lot of uh, crazy stuff, but he uh, Todd Rogers is a real pathetic guy. It's all he had. He's actually the first professional gamer, by the way, because he did it with sponsorships back in the 80s. Todd Rogers, um, he's also very good, but I guess that's all he had. He almost did it for clout, but not the kind of clout that gets you money. It's just the kind of clout that keeps you relevant in your peer group. I don't understand the Billy Mitchell stuff because like, he has a successful business, doesn't he? Yes. Like, he just legitimately has like a yes. successful hot really, yeah, business that makes him real real. I heard it's money. good, that's too. That's how he can take these course cases. Yeah. I heard it's real good. He takes these hot sauce cases like... If he would have just done this gracefully, I know this is fucking rich coming from me, the guy who lost the <laughs> You threw a match. You tried <laughs> to throw a match. <laughs> but, 
like if he would have been like if he would like just shook Steve Weeby's hand and hugged him and everything, he wouldn't be the he wouldn't be the villain of the internet. People would probably still love him to death. I, I well, I, I don't think he's incapable of doing that. I think there's something. Boogie, you're an expert in mental health. Is it fair to say that Billy <laughs> Mitchell has a, 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 some kind of mental health issue? Because a normal I, person would have acted like Syndicate. He got caught. He never said anything. Yeah. I, I, I mean, at the end of the day, I think anybody that's playing Donkey Kong for 12 hours a day has a fucking... <laughs> <case. laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, just you need a lot of help at that point, right? Jeez, here's here's, 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 here's another see. question I got. Like, how, what is the barometer of fucking like being good at video games? Because Boogie said he's really good at video games. To me, he's really good at Pac Man, right? No, like, no, he's got a bunch of other scores too. I understand yeah, that, yeah. but like, has he got any scores from a game that isn't from like the nineteen? No, well, he's a retro 80s? gamer, so he's a retro gamer. He was a top. Well, what, of the what does time retro the, mean? I'd be like the songs I listen to in high school. Well, the at, the station at, at the time, he was one of the top. In, in nineteen eighty two, he's the top centipede player in the world that they knew of. In two thousand ten, um, I was it, one of the top YouTube channels had, on the planet. Yeah, Donkey Kong. Yeah, Donkey yeah. Kong Junior. All the here's another thing. Not all records are alike. If I get a record like in Tony Hawk for, for a level, for for a level, it's not like having Missile Command. It's got to be like a legendary game. So the, the more legendary the game is, the more difficult it's considered by the community, the more kind of clout that you get. And but he I, had he had some of the big, he, he was champion of all the, probably legitimately, he was champion of all the classics at one point. Uh, so no, I, I, I would say he's a great gamer, sure. But I think, I would think there's a uh, truth to what Wings is saying. If you put him down in front of Fortnite, he probably sucks. Oh, sure. sure. But, but I, I, mean, like, I know simple. a guy. These games I know are simple a, as shit. You know, I know it's a German good. guy over. He he has incredible like hand eye coordination. When we play Apex together, it's like I can't compete. He's it's just it looks like he's hacking and he does it on my PC. He's just running faster. It looks like how's that possible than the other players? If I put him, if I play him in Donkey Kong, he can't get past the first level. Well, here here's my you know? here, here's my here's my rationale with this. Right, metaphor right now is probably the best COD player in the world. If you watch him play. It looks like a fucking machine is playing, and he's legitimate. Like, like he's he's been yeah, yeah. Down that's everything. kind of what I was saying, Wings. That's kind of what I was saying. Like, but, but here, looks, let me the, let me finish my thought. It, met, if you took metaphor and you go, hey, I need you to get a good store, score in Donkey Kong within a, a week, I bet you he could do it because he's naturally know. gifted at gaming. If you in took week, Billy no. Mitchell. But, and put him in Call of Duty and say, hey, I need you to win like a battle yeah, royale. Yeah, but he's 50 something. He's also 50 years old. Those little hand eye coordinations, they, 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 go, they go away over time. I think if you if you gave him enough time in the game in 1982, I think he, for the same reason that you think that Metaphor could get good at Donkey Kong. By, by the way, he would need more than a week. It would probably be a year. Um, Donkey I'm not Kong saying beat the world record. Like, I'm saying yeah, like, yeah, just yeah, get but a you're, you're, I, I, I'm, I, I'm arguing with you, and I actually agree with you. Yeah, if, if he's that talented, yes, you can go to other games for sure. But Billy Mitchell can't do it because he's, you know, he's fifty some odd years old. As I mean, someone who, as someone who knows a, a fair amount about retro games, a lot of these retro classic games too. By the way, um, the way they get so good at these games, Pac Man is a perfect example. Is you understand the coding behind it, and then you understand how the ghosts are going to behave, and how the board behaves, or how the missiles are going to fly, or however else. And so it's less about just being skilled at the video game, and more about knowing a little bit about the programming and how to. To work that to your advantage. But well. speedrunners do that today. Speedrunners do that yeah, today. They like, do yeah, the coding. It's like, like it's that. like so. They, it's I wouldn't like say Doom. that changed. It's like Doom. Like yeah. people know that if the monster has to move six like steps before he's able to shoot his gun, like they know that in the code. But like that, I was gonna bring up this point. Like speedrunning. Like Carl Jost has like the speed run on Golden Eye. It's like fifty two seconds. It might be fifty one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's one of those two numbers. Mm -hmm. But. There's a lot of people that have came close to tying him, and they're just copying what he did, and they're just trying to make a micro change in his route. Like, at what point is the skill set? Wouldn't the skill set be the person who created the base route to, to begin with, versus like everybody who used his route and tied him? Yeah, I would say he's the most influential player in that situation, but he's not necessarily the best. Because like, if somebody no, comes take, by and gets a well, take it athlete, damn, let's like for example, Let's if somebody comes by and gets a fifty-one damn because they get a a better RNG than Carl got at some point, right? Like maybe the grenade landed a certain way and pushed his character forward. Like, is that guy better at damn fifty-one because he because he's a second faster? Yes, he's probably is because he figured it out. But I know I hear what you're saying. Yeah, can we talk about Pokemon for a yeah, second? Yeah, sure, sure. All right, so there's this dude that for whatever reason takes photos of influencers and 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 race swaps them. Right, I guess he uses like Facetune or something like that. Um, I don't really understand the point of it, but it uh, seems to amuse some people. Well, Pokemon is not amused, and she has decided to start DMCAing allegedly 
uh, this dude whenever he does it. Now, uh, the example that I was given was, uh, you know, here's you as a black person, right? Simple as that. Now, here's what you would look like as a black person. She wants that taken down. Now, it's, I don't understand the logic of why you even want to bother taking that right. down. What, was it worth now. your time? Now, my question is, and this is what I'm confused about. Um, do you think it's offensive to other people or is it offensive to you? Is it offensive to you to see yourself as a black person, Pokemon? Is that the problem you're having? Explain <laughs> to me the problem. Well, it's says black because or Chinese on this photo. Oh, you play, well, you play the race card. <laughs> Of course I did. Of course I did. Because I have to wonder. I have to wonder what your problem is with it. If somebody wants to face tune me, somebody wants to draw me. I've had people draw me as Snorlax. I've had people uh, draw me as everything there is. Make me black. Make me white. Make me purple. I don't give a shit. Make me a flying purple people eater. I don't give a god. So why is Pokemon upset about this? Make that make sense, Tommy. Me? Yeah. She's make a, that make sense. She's a sociopath. She's been a sociopath her whole fucking career. She's complete. She's an egomaniac. She can't take a slight. She'll do absolutely anything to get ahead. She's always been and always will be a vicious businesswoman, not the girl next door that she pretends to be. So guys who can't get laid pretend they're his girlfriend. That's why she the doesn't Fedora admit to having a boyfriend. Army. So she is an egomaniac, and egomaniacs can't stand the slight. Yeah. There, there's I, your answer. And, <laughs> you I, and I'll, I'll go as far as to call her. She acts like a fem cell dude i've never seen anybody more bitter and more angry broke boy if you got a broke boy just say so if you're a broke boy oh i would never go to did you ever uh, meet a I, woman I, oh. let me ask you did you ever meet a woman there's more in the money than like sex or men or even like cats or dogs i i've met a few of these women they're, they're rare tommy like, you know i have you yeah, watched well, the documentary I mean, like, tommy. I, I, i'm talking about that's all like they're uh, i'm talking about building their own they usually they're usually successful business women in their own right they're not okay, i'm not yeah. talking about like a gold digger yeah, I'm talking yeah, yeah. about a woman that is only interested in pushing her profile up. I've met women like this. I'll tell you, the best uh, movie portrayal of a woman like that was the redhead in Jerry Maguire, the one that put the L over her forehead, right, Oh yeah. Uh, in Jerry Maguire. She was only with Tom Cruise because they wanted to be a power couple. That's what Pokimane is. Yeah. That's what Zoe yeah. She's Yo. That's my ex – you asked me a question? That's my explanation. Uh, I, got, I, got, I, got, I got something for Pokemon because she got about 10 years where she's sucking on fucking OnlyFans for her money. <laughs> she needs to go in. She, she needs to be worried about her that. image. I, I'm being oh. for real. Like the problem with women is like, especially women in like today's like internet circle is like once they hit that, that hump of 30, like all these Fedora army dudes that be following them and simping that money, they'll move on to the next new hotness and you'll be gone. Yeah, make, sure. make your, make yep. your fucking money or you're going to be yep, making it on exactly. OnlyFans. I, I, I mean, they I all did it. Did not Belle, Belle Fiend? She was sucking dick on OnlyFans. Who else? Like, I, I don't think the red. I, I think I think Bell was. It, it, if I had to guess, Bell went into that willingly and kind of wanted to try. That's the feeling I got. Yeah, from Belle. and it's so funny because that's what killed her career. Right? Did it, did it really like, kill it? She her, might have just yeah, got enough money. I mean, she went from making probably like a couple million dollars a month to making considerably less because, and and, and she said this, and I, and I I think she said this. Uh, when her entire allure was. She, she trolled you along, trolled you along, trolled you along, made you want it. That's every OnlyFans girl out there. Take this advice because I've known a few of you girls. I've been friends with a few of you girls. I've even done business with some of you girls, not by buying, but helping, right? And the answer is you slow roll it as much as you humanly possibly can. If you're cute enough to where men want to see you naked, then the last thing you do is show them you naked. You show them a tease. You show them cosplay. You show them as little as possible. And then when the money starts drying up, that's where you pull a titty out. And then so you're saying she did like up, Marvel and Game for yeah, the Yeah, that's porn exactly deal. it. She <laughs> ended her own career because she, you know, she didn't just she, allude she to the, the prestige she was way having. too quickly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, what what about like what do these people do when they grow up and have kids though? Like 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 I I got a I got a hater and Who like is I'm that sure porn other actress? people have haters. The Wings 007 and it's like his his claim to fame right now is he's with Blade, like taking his channel down and making him go to all these streaming services. Like, what are you gonna do when your kid grows up? It's like, Dad, what you do when you were my age? Ah, oh, like this business. drunk motherfucker, <laughs> this L. I gave him this L. It's like, come on, dog. Like, like, just imagine if your mom is like catching facials on fucking OnlyFans when she was twenty five, and everybody's still jerking off to it because it's been reuploaded on Pub. Who was that porn star that was on Nine Two One Zero back in the day, Boogie? Ooh, or not Nine Two? No, not the other one. The other one, the spinoff show. She was oh. like one of the first, one of the most famous stars. I cannot remember her name. Jenna Jameson? Oh, no, before, that was 90s. Uh, we're talking 70s and 80s. 
Oh God, I remember. I remember. Oh, you know, she's like blonde. And then she went. She made the the jump to. Porn. She was on Melrose Place. Tracy Lords. Yes. Okay. That I, you, Tracy. Did you Lord's hear the that. Tracy? Like Boogie is one hundred percent right on his on on his read of this the Z girl stuff. Do you know what her move was? First of all, she was one of those Soft girls. Guess where I no, first seen her at? Tra- no, no, no. Tracy Lords is, and this is what I think. Belle Delphine is just super fucking smart. Okay. Tracy Lords got into pornography when she was fifteen. And nobody could tell because she looked like one of those 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 you know twenty year old women that that just look like you know maybe they're eighteen or nineteen and that's a big a big sell. She was just a full blown woman by the time uh, she was that age. There was no real way to tell. So the uh, directors took her in, right? So she did porn, did porn, did porn, and she became not shockingly the most popular porn actress in the business. Okay, her last film. Uh, unless she's done one since and the story's changed. Her last film, she bought her own production company and she filmed herself after she turned 18, okay? Then put out her stuff and announced to the world that all the other stuff she had done, she had done as a minor, which makes it CP, and all those companies had to pull their stuff, their Tracy Lord stuff off the shelf and only person that could make money on Tracy Lord's body was Tracy Lord's because she made her own company. And mm. uh, just took all the money. That's the kind of move that I think. Did she ruin her career? That's what. That's what. I, I got a question though, and I know you can't answer this question, but like, did none of them like file like a like a ten ninety nine k on Tracy Lords? And they're like, hey, I need your social security number and like figure I out. I don't know. It's the seventies. You probably could fake that shit back then, man. Yeah, probably really easy. You know, I, I heard about guys all the way to sixties joining the army at sixteen. You probably heard stuff like I grown yeah, down south. Yeah, I heard right? I, I heard that in in honestly in Iraq, like the after nine eleven. I didn't know like, that that I that I have a tough time believing, and I because I would have snitched on it. I would have snitched if I didn't know. I've seen people like sixteen, that. seventeen, trying to get into the fucking army. Trying to get in nowadays, I don't think you could do it, but I uh, maybe Vietnam, but that would have probably been difficult. But prior to that, you could get in early. There's all sorts of stories about kids getting into World War One, Two, and Korea. Why would you so, want to get in that shit? Like, dude, like World War One was. And vicious like that i think that's the most vicious war we're like you gotta expect is. to jump out of a trench and run across a people field were with different machine guns back, gunning people, you down people yeah were they were dumb as back then. that's what the difference no, they was. Were different. <laughs> I, tell you, I tell you what they were is they were like proud of their country yeah, i tell you, you what i would yeah. i tell you what i would have been i would have been a fucking traitor son you put me in the yeah, brig yeah, I, I am not that. running <laughs> that's I where i would be that. at <laughs> Hey, yeah, I, I, I'm not rushing. I'm not getting shot for this. I'll just go to jail. I do have I do have another topic. You don't you go to jail in World about. War One. You get a firing squad in World War One. Not not Americans didn't. Like the yes, Russians maybe. Yes, in World oh, War One. The did English they? Yeah, yes, they did. If you dipped during a battle, if you dipped before before or early on or before, you probably just do some time, right? That's right. You did it in you 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 not only could you be executed. You could do a field execution if the officer saw to, signed off on it. American soldiers. World War One. Yeah, yeah. World War One. I. I don't think World War Two. You could do that. You could be executed. In World War Two. I know they executed a World War uh, Two veteran here in Germany. Was yeah, he, man. Was he like like a like a like a, a he was Hitler a, guy? He was a, he was a, he was a, he was a, no. He was American. He was he was killing children, German children. Not even in combat. He was just killing Jones. He was a, he was a serial killer. It was just serial, serial. I understand serial he was a serial killer, killer but I'm sort of yeah, thinking like killer. the Americans in Vietnam where they would just kill babies and shit like that. No, that's a f- that is my lie incident. Actually, do you know that there? I I don't want to get my veteran status, but um, there are more war crimes in, in World War II than there was World War or the Vietnam. They, there's no higher or lower. Uh, I mean, the, the whole Vietnam, in my Americans. opinion, was a war crime because it was it was baseless. Well, I, like, I don't want to get into the politics of it, but you want to talk about actual incidents. More guys did time, and there were more incidents in World War II, the Good War, than the Bad War. Those those non vets, those non vets, uh, for the most part, I would say the majority of the time behaved honorably in combat. I and know, it's my, just my, a, I only get to go by my uncle Jerry told me because like my uncle Jerry yeah, was an it's also, it's, guy it's, in it's, Vietnam. It, here's what your uncle Jerry is bought into. Your 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 uncle Jerry bought into a myth, mostly pushed by the media at the time. Well, the Vietnam I, veterans are some of the best veterans we've ever seen i got a story for you then because i got a story he told me because he was an artillery man so he shot those mm-hmm. big artillery guns he can't hear worth of shit now so you got to scream mm-hmm. at him but they had these big artillery shells they shot up and like what they would do so they didn't have to kill a bunch of like nva is they would actually make shamans out of people like 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 almost scarecrows they would go take the bodies and put them on poles and like stick the arms and the head 
on the poll, and it was oh, like yeah. against the. It was like like the NBA thought this was like bad. Juju. I'm sure like stuff like that happened. Stuff. I'm sure guys got away with it, but we can't count stuff that people got away with. We can only count the it, it amount like, of people. That like the like military now is fucked up. Like they do stuff like fucked up now. Like they do. Like my brother, for out. example, my brother was a medic, mm-hmm. and like the, you know how they train medics now. You know how they train you to do a tourniquet as a medic in the American Army? They bring a wow. live goat over and they cut its leg off with a pair of shears and they so make what? you tourniquet the leg. Like that's like wow. that, that, that's that's animal abuse. It's that's a some shit. You know what you know, you're supposed to listen to your fucking leg. I mean, Jesus Christ, if that's what they gotta get trained around to keep my fucking leg like, on why not, or why save not my just, life. Why, why not have them go to like Apprentice. At I, a by the way, I've never. Heard, ER or I have something like that. never heard of that. By the way, I've never heard of that. This, I, I, I believe my brother when he said that's how he learned how to. I'm do not saying your brother's. I would dare your brother's a vet. I wouldn't call him a liar, but I've never fucking heard of that. Never heard of anything like that. Another thing is they changed the policy when I was in the army. They, instead of doing pressure uh, on the wound, they usually go right to tourniquet and they just say you're going to lose your arm, you're going to lose your leg, and we're going to give you a prosthetic because a lot of guys got killed in Iraq and Afghanistan trying to put pressure, and the guys would lose blood. And um, because that's what that you're was talk, you're talking about, like now triage, they go, like right, they go right to triage. tourniquet now. They go right is that to that battlefield triage or like, or like on base because, like, that's different on base. No, the, the policy is now to go right to tourniquet because so many guys lost their lives. It used to be pressure, and then if it still kept bleeding, go to tourniquet because you do once you go to tourniquet, you're losing your leg. That's it, right? You guys are blood off, and it just yeah, just you're, dies. Done. Yeah. you're done, you're done, you're losing the leg. But they lost so many guys, and when they switched the policies, they'd go right to tourniquet, which used to be a no-no. Um, then less guys started dying. You're better off you going probably right don't, to probably don't bleed out, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like, but here's the thing. Yeah, because if the pressure doesn't stop, you're going to bleed out. So it's too late for tourniquet. I got a surprise for Boogie! Oh, okay. God. You think you know what it is? Oh, God. I'm just terrified at this point. What? Me and your girlfriend are going to Las Vegas. I'm just kidding. Um. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Tommy, you're on thin enough ice as it is, bud. <laughs> what's the thin. deal? What's yeah, the deal with all these married men getting Boogie's girlfriend's number? Yeah, this is a good question. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> like, right. I got a number, question for Boogie. Snap. Like, how, what's what? her Snapchat like after Keemstar leaked it? <laughs> I, I want to. I want to know if Boogie has any idea what I'm going to bring up. No, I have no idea. Wait, no what? idea. No, no idea. idea. Bring up. Uh, no. Last week, you were accused. I think rightfully so of plagiarism. Boogie 2988 plagiarized my script, which is, let's, let's talk about this. Oh, mm, this oh yeah. Stream. Go right ahead. Let's hear what you I have to say. Here. No, I disagree here. No, I'm asking you. Did you plagiarize that guy's stuff? No, I didn't see his video ahead of time. Um, but I, here's what I say. Anyway, even if I had, here's the crux of it, right? We talked about uh, our experiences on YouTube. His video is about his experiences on YouTube. My video is about my experiences on YouTube and why I thought everybody was quitting based on my feelings and their feelings. And I did a comedy sketch and he did a bunch of drawings and he talked about this. But there's a small section in this in the middle that has some similarities. And I want to admit it's strikingly similar. Right. Um, I so you're, you're, deny, you're denying it. Yeah, obviously, I, I, because I didn't do it. It's easy to deny because I didn't do it. Right? I didn't see his video. Um, but as I'm saying, it did come out. Your video came out after his, correct? Yeah, I think like. Eight days, and somebody said that they thought I copied it from a TikTok. That's how I learned about this, and I don't really I don't know use TikTok matters. anymore. So then the next morning, I woke up and I found out it's also a YouTube video. So I wrote the guy and talked to him about this. But again, the big crux of it is he, we both described at the beginning of YouTube. You're filled with hope that you can like become a good person and make all the money and, and entertain people and make them happy. And then when you become a full-time YouTuber, you're motivated by fear because you don't know if you're going to lose your house. You don't know if you can pay people. You don't know okay. if you're going to be able to get your shit yeah, 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 that's the crux of the video. But right. I mean, Boogie, do you want to hear the... Uh, I, I have both uh, both your statements. Yeah, go ahead. You I've heard his it? statement too, yeah. Okay, here is... No, it. I'm sorry, both both your videos. I haven't... I, I, I took the time to write it down today. Sure. Uh, this is the talentless writer. When you're starting out on YouTube before you have any sort of sizable audience, you're fueled by hope. Hope that one day you're going to be known amongst all the other people you watch. Hope that you'll make money off doing what you love and hope that you'll have tons of subscribers who love your videos. That's the talentless writer. This was Boogies, right? Sure. The video that came out uh, later. When you first start making YouTube videos, you are driven by one thing and that is hope. Hope that you can create a career out of it. Hope that you will entertain people. Hope that you can make something amazing. 
You yeah. think that that's, yeah. a, that, that, that's a coincidence after a couple of days? Yeah, I do. I time? honestly do. I, yeah, those those are very similar statements, right? Because there's like only the one the way day, to do that, because that's the only way it actually. Yeah, happens. but the structure's the you're same. The hope, the, the, the way, here's, the hope, the structure is the same as well. Here's what I say: Number one, if I was going to plagiarize, I plagiarized a little bit in high school. You rearrange, shit, man. If you're going to plagiarize, you rearrange, shit, don't you? So you're making you, the argument I didn't do it because I would have done it better. No, I'm yes. also making the argument that even if I had what, which I did, but if even if I had watched his video and I decided to lift that phrase from it. Because ninety eight percent of the video is different. That's still okay. not plagiarism. Okay. God, look, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not saying just but the, the way the structure is. Hope that this. Hope that that. Hope that that was his well, style. He, as well. he, here's here's my yeah. thought. Here's my thought about it. First off, like I plagiarized Blaine Truth the Next Cow when I started my fucking YouTube channel because I watched their videos. And I'm like, I want to do that too. Because what they had was an idea that I wanted to use as well. They had an that's idea a plagiarism. Of commentary over. That's not plagiarism. Gameplay. That's right. how's exactly, how's Boogie's exactly. Because right? what Boogie had was an idea, and there's only one way to explain that idea. There's only like one way. You to get explain in. It. You only get in. You get into YouTube with a desire to make videos that people will interact with, and when you start here's making what, money, here's my point. You're no here's longer my making that video for desire. Here's you're my it argument. You have to make here, it. here the structure is hope that one day you're going to be known amongst the people you watch, and then he writes hope you can make a career out of hope that you will. Make money. So, I mean, it's so a style so of writing. Un, so you're unwilling to be like that. That, that could just be coincidence. Like, you right, know how many well, people you want to do another one? Just like that. Yeah, let's do another. Yeah, one. want to do another one? Another okay, one. Yeah. look, look I, like I'm not trying to convince you. I'm not trying yeah, to. Give me the you. next one. Hey, okay. Go, okay. Uh, once you quit, this is a talentless writer. Once you quit your job or school and focus solely on making money through YouTube, you are now being fueled by fear. Every day goes from I wonder if this video will blow up so people will notice me to oh. If this video doesn't do well, I'm not going to be able to eat. This is Boogies. But when you quit your job and make YouTube a full-time gig, you're motivated by a whole other thing, and that's fear. Fear that you're going to earn enough money to survive doing it. So the structure is kind of the same as the hope thing as well. Yeah, yeah. But, but again... This is, a, this is a blind coincidence! But again, if I was going to steal, I would have at least changed around the sh don't you and, think? And, and again, I, you're honestly, making the argument you would have done more if you would have stole. Yeah, so that's, that's, steal, I didn't do it because I would have done a much better job of stealing. Uh, no, I'm also making the argument that even if I did exactly what you're saying that I did, that I watched this video it, and I lifted five examples? sentences from it, it's still I've got one more example. I've got one more. Give me more. more because like, I don't, I'm not, I hear, you know, the videos Boogie, are I'm like eight enough. months. I'm not smart enough to say if this is plagiarism or not, and I am no. not a lawyer. I am putting this to you so you can address it and people yeah, can come sure. up yeah, with their going, own keep conclusion. Going, keep going. Okay, the talent is right. And logically, you think once it's your main job, you know, you have more time so you can make more videos, which means you'll get more views and more money. That makes sense, right? But that's not how it really works because YouTube isn't like a regular job. In a regular job, if you go from working 20 hours a week to 40 hours a week, you make double the money because you did double the work or at least worked double your hours. But on YouTube, you can go from making four videos a month to making eight videos a month or even 12 videos a month and make even less money than when you were making four videos a month. Here, here's, 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 here's Boogie's part. And here's the crazy thing about being a YouTuber. If you do more work, it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll make more money. If you work at a normal job with a wage or even a salary, and most of the time you do overtime, you'll probably get extra pay. But on YouTube, you spend that extra time making more videos and that video gets demonetized or doesn't perform well in the algorithm or your audience just doesn't like it, you'll probably end up earning less money. Here's the thing. I wouldn't say that's plagiarism at all. I could No, that uh, isn't uh, even remote. No, that's not even close. close. That's 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 not close. But yeah. considering it's in the same kind of format as the other two things in the same order, that's that's strange. Yeah. Uh, that's, it, that's I mean that's an incredible coincidence, Buggy. Then he copied my bit about me talking about Meat Canyon. For Meat Canyon, for example, instead of having a big team that's putting a shit ton of time, energy, and money into each animation, he could instead make commentary videos that take less time, have less money put into them, and actually get way more of a reward out of it because it's most likely not going to get demonetized. He can put a sponsor in the video without it ruining the story. That's why you see in the case of Papa Meat, He's gone from making these really intense, incredible animations to doing commentary videos instead. And the reason's pretty obvious. With the amount of time and effort it took to make one of his animations, he can make like a million commentary videos. 
complete with sponsors, by the way. So you absolutely know that low effort content is going to make him more money. Now, in Joel Haver's case, he's going the opposite route of what most YouTubers here are doing, and he's going to put in more time into his content and make less money, but that's because he's insane and not because it's a smart business move. Then there's the interesting case of Joel Haver, who has been making weekly comedy videos for a long time, and he's decided to go a completely different route with it. Joel decided that he's not motivated by anything other than his own creative desire, so he stopped making weekly comedy videos and is now going to make monthly feature-long films. That's a crazy person, but I love that kind of crazy. I really don't think it is, and I'll tell you something else. I've watched like five other people's Why Everybody's Quitting YouTube videos, and we pretty much all say about the same fucking thing. I mean, I think you would, but I mean... Right. Let me, let me, let me ask you, let me ask you this. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you go deeper than that in the video? Because like, from my understanding, yes. like, yeah, there's some coincidences, but like, there's like six other minutes to these videos that are completely yeah. different. I do an entire I, comedy sketch at the beginning he did. I mentioned creators he didn't mention. He mentions creators I didn't mention. Um, there's I didn't there's, accuse you of, um, right. I didn't I know, accuse I'm, you of really driving the whole video. Yeah, I, 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 I'm just I, saying, I put to you, I mean, me personally, yeah, I think it. Am I going to say it's definitely it? Yeah, I think you plagiarize him. Do I know that for a fact? There's no way I can say I'm not a lawyer. Right. But I, yeah, I, I think there's enough here to, to satisfy me, especially under the I, 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 I disagree because like, I don't feel like you can plagiarize an idea. Like if you play, if you make a song in the same key as another band makes a song in, even though it's the same fucking key, you're not plagiarizing them because all the I agree, but it, the is structure's different. the same. When he goes from hope and he does a sentence, and then he goes even to, then, then, yeah, even then I don't think it defines. Uh, it yeah. Even comes close. All right. Well, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. So there's a there's a song called One Night. I forgot who it's by, but it goes. I want you all my life, making wishes with all. I'm messing the lyrics up. You know what I'm saying. You've heard the song, right? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. I want to ask. I want to ask Boogie a couple more questions. Well, I'm just no, saying, I have a question. Talking, it's 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 you. I have a question. The, for you. I have a question. I'm saying for you. it because it's an ABC song. Sure. <laughs> okay, I have a question for you. Okay, have you mm. ever watched a single Quentin Tarantino movie? Yes. Okay, then you should probably know that. About eighty percent of what Quentin Tarantino does is lifted from other films. Yeah, he, he's open right? about that. But so that's are, we not suing Quint that, are we suing Quentin Tarantino for plagiarism? No, no? but I, I don't think that. I don't so think that's. Even, I don't think even this, if the scenario does he lift the scenario? Does he? He doesn't. Even, he's not lifting. He, first of all, he does. He does remakes. First of all, so that wouldn't count as all. Even if he no, no, not remakes. He literally recreates. Yeah, yeah. The exact I, I, scene, exact heavily angle, the Django is heavily influenced by another movie, Spaghetti Western, that I watched today called Django. That's not the same one with a white guy. Well, no. What I'm saying is, and shot for shot. In some scenes, he'll take from the filthy eight. He'll he'll literally shot for he'll watch a movie and say, "I like how this shot's done." I'm, I'm talking about the writing, not the, not the presentation. Oh, I'm talking I don't, about I don't, the writing. I don't, I don't, I'm talking about all of it. You can't okay, copyright a shot. So can I back, can I back, shot. Can I backpack? What I'm saying movie? is, what I'm saying is, even in this made up scenario where I watch this guy's video. I broke out pen and paper. I wrote down his words, sat here in front of my computer, and read those two sentences from his video to my computer. It still ain't a big fucking deal. It oh, did. Well, it's, it's a big deal. People want to make it. it I did. Can, can I make? Can I make the Quinn character thing happen. for you before you jump off this? Because I I know about this because like for example, like you ever seen Glorious Bastards? Yes. Okay, and Glorious Bastard is a scene where like he goes to this Jewish household and there's people hiding under the floor and sure. he talks to the paper. That's that scene is ripped directly from the good and the bad and the ugly when Angel Eyes goes to the farmer's house looking for somebody. Yeah. And the from shot to shot, the theme, everything is the same. He's you can't he's copyright I, I you don't listen to me. You can't copyright a way something's being filmed. You can do it with words. Right, but That's I'm just saying. It's the I'm words. saying like there's yeah, not like, enough I'm not, meat I'm there saying, to say I, plagiarism. No, I'm not. I wouldn't call that plagiarism because you can't call what Terrence did when he lifted that plagiarism. I'm talking about the writing. No, I don't think. Did, did, did he take it? Did he take it word for word from the good, the bad, the ugly? I know he that's did not. He did true. not. Yeah, he yeah. Because so, so, it's two I different mean, subjects. Yeah, but like, but okay, like the well, whole well, I, if, the theme, the idea, and the shot setup are all the same. If another movie, uh, if if another movie uses the phrase "show me the money," do we have to say they're plagiarizing Jerry Maguire? It would depend on the circumstance. Yeah, well, it would depend on the circumstance. If they're think... making, if they were making a movie and they changed all the characters' names, it's fundamentally the same story, and we're taking line for line. I think, yeah, that probably well, would go. Every, every, but everybody I'm not a says they should boogie. Boy plagiarize me. <laughs> Well, at the end of the day, I I I know for a fact that I didn't see his video ahead of time. You didn't do it. And I, you know, I asked you about the phone call between you and him. 
Oh, there was no phone call. What phone you, call? you guys never talked? You just oh DMs. No, we messaged each other. Yeah, yeah, Can yeah. I ask you about the DMs? Yeah, of course. What did you tell you? Did you tell me you're gonna kill yourself if you can take down a video? <laughs> no, of course not. I heard that a few times. But here's did what I did. I'm, I'm asking. I'm just asking. No, of course not. Here's what I did say. And again, I don't like outing other people's uh DMs, but I'll give you the gist of it. I said I wrote them, I said, Hey man, I literally had no clue who you were till this morning. But however, if you want me to make this right, I'll do it. Do you want me to delete the video? Uh, whatever. I'll take care of it. And then he wrote me back and says, no, he's not really into drama. And it's not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, look, here's how this played out from my perspective. Um, I showed him, number one, how people were bombarding my video. And he said he didn't want that to be happening. And he's sorry that it was, which I thought was cool of him. He said he didn't realize that would happen. Um, and then he linked me the video. And then I showed him... I'm like, here's the how the play, timeline played out for me. I showed him a screenshot where somebody said, uh, it's amazing that you stole this from a TikTok. And that was like 21 hours before him and I started talking. And I'm like, I don't use TikTok anymore. So I guarantee you I didn't use TikTok okay. or whatever. But I think what I first said to him was, uh, why would anybody plagiarize, plagiarize me? I have a dying channel. Like, I, why would anybody? Be yeah, you know, but me, see, so. you know, that, that's always a red flag to me. Why would I do it? I would have done it better. Why would I do that? I don't have well, TikTok. No, no, why no, would no, I do it? You're, you're misunderstanding. You're misunderstanding. Ever. You're I mean, misunderstanding. It's like some Mama Max. <laughs> you're misunderstanding. The guy said, oh, we'll talk about Mama Max too. No, no, way. wait, let's, let's skip that. But go ahead. No, let's look at that. But listen, is, we did an hour. No, but listen, this guy said, um, he's like, uh, isn't it strange that there's a TikTok exactly like this? And I responded to him and I said, uh, yeah, that is pretty strange because why would anybody plagiarize me? I'm a I'm basically, I'm not important enough or good enough to plagiarize, right? And he goes, no, 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 it's actually you plagiarizing a TikTok. And I'm like, then I'll use TikTok so that we're done, right? That's a simple thing. Uh, um, <laughs> if that's true there's no way to tell no, if that's true or not well yeah i mean you, you can it's, it, i don't uh, go look at the last time i posted go look at the last time i did anything on tiktok i mean you don't use it well, i've I don't, posted no. two years i probably haven't seen a tiktok well, yeah you can't TikTok prove a negative i can't day. i can't prove to you that i haven't used tiktok for the last three months it's sick i just i haven't and i can okay. tell you why specifically why i don't use tiktok anymore um because i don't i'm bored with what tiktok shows me it's kind of fucking gross my, my girlfriend don't like it i don't all right it's got nothing to do with plagiarism absolutely yeah. nothing to do with yeah plagiarism. well okay. so you didn't but guilt anyway. this guy because here's the thing you should have took down the video not him and that's what it ended up happening he told me not to though and he said and he, he told you not to and then you said you would do it why would you do that if you think you're in the right because i just i'm sick of this man oh, i'm just man. sick of like, you gotta stop stop letting shit. people cancel you boogie that video is going to make what 50 to 100 dollars Oh, exactly. he's not going to get canceled yeah. over this. This do, is totally do, do, safe. Do what I told you to do. Plagiarize that motherfucker's whole setup. Get a doll <laughs> with a microphone on top of it. Do you a <laughs> fake ass fucking like apology video. Hold your fucking dogs up because all dogs need to be in apology videos. And yeah, then at the yeah, end of the yeah. video, go to a stakeout and be like, I'm eating a motherfucking steak off the money I made off your video that I plagiarized. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's what you should do, and that will get you more views and get you another day. You probably steak. will. He's probably shit. right. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. that guy's trying to pay rent. That's all he's trying to do. <laughs> I mean, I mean, at at the end of the day, this is my opinion. I don't. It was just a shit video that no one gave a fuck about that already gotten all the views it was going to get. If it was going to bring him pleasure for me to your bring video down, or his, I didn't mind. <laughs> I mean, I think his is still all in the algorithm. You know. Yeah. Um, no, he so, took but, us down. He's 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 private. Well, no, no, he's like plagiarism. His original one is still. No, no, no. What that motherfucker did is he right. is he Listen. he unlisted it so he can still get that scratch. Yeah, yeah. he unlisted it. No, they, it hasn't gone up. I I've been looking at the video. He hasn't gone up in two days. So. Hey, I will say one other thing in his. He's like a nice guy. I got to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, that's what like, I was about to say. Yeah. Um, any other YouTuber would have looked at how much people love to hate me, decided they wanted that audience. And, and decided to go after file. me for Which file. is exactly what he should have done. Which is exactly what he should have done. smart enough. Just like, no, this, just like Wings just told you to, to, to steal his no, shit. He should have done this guy, you. This guy is smart enough to know that the people that hate me are not good viewers and you don't They're Probably true. <laughs> 100%. This guy is smart enough people. to know that the trash. You really that think is, that's why he yeah. did it or he just didn't want to like. So. I'd yeah. like to think so. Uh, I hope so. Uh, <laughs> I think that's you projecting a little bit. In, in his know. statement, and this is why I say that, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but he said something along the lines of, 
man, I just want people to come watch my goofy little videos because they like my goofy little videos. That's basically what he said. And I take him at his word that he decided not to chase the clout, not to do more because at the end He's of the stupid. day. <laughs> He's stupid. He should have done it. He stole a lot of people shit. He should have moved up. A lot of people don't want to play th this game the way we play it. A lot of people don't want to fake a bunch of drama and scream at each other Please. and act like assholes. Hold up. We don't you know, fake some, no some people drama. Just wanna... like, there's, there's drama right now. Nobody that the fakes last drama here. Was fake. I don't fake it. Thing. I don't oh, I, I'll, you know, looking at the comments of the video oh, I just do. went out during the I, show. I, They're like, oh, fake. Set yeah, up. I know. You fake everything. Every stupid movie you ever made was 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 uh, was. Oh, no, no, a lot of it. A lot. A lot of my shit was real, but a, a lot right. of it's been fake too. Yeah. But I, I want to reiterate, we don't fake. Shit. We barely show up to this fucking show. I fake shit all the time. I really want people to understand that. I don't yes. believe that. For uh, yes, I'm an idiot. Yes, I lost a shitload of my money in cop. crypto. Yes, I'm a mentally ill a idiot. Those things are all true. Yo, but so much of this script. has been you stole baited. Script. Oh, by so much of this shit has been baited. And nobody believes it, and I laugh at you every time. Yes, yeah, you, so you fooled everybody. You made everybody hate you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, you know, like You're I said, no, but but hey, hey Tom, hey Tommy, okay, number one, they seem to hate you a little bit more than they hate me because they were trying to. I don't give a shit. They're trying to vote you off the podcast last night. I don't have. I don't. I don't have to make. I don't have to make, I don't have to make, I don't have to make a big fucking forty chess story why I okay. uh, for my no, failures but, or what I no, can't do. No, but here's what I'm saying. In 2019, me and Keemstar had a conversation, and he told me that if I wanted to continue to be relevant at all on this platform, I was going to have to turn heel. And I, yes, all the things I did before 2019. Pretty much just stupid boogie being stupid shit. But most of the things I've done since 2019 have been me trying to turn hill. Not Good all advice, of them. Good advice, Keem. Way to Not go, Keemstar. Not all of them, because I'm a fucking idiot, right? I'm still going to fuck up from time to time. I should have never interacted with Frank well, The good news is you can always blame it on a character. That's perfect. You sound like Def It doesn't Noodles. matter because nobody ever believes it anyway. Yeah. I still, I, <laughs> but you I, don't mind fucking shoving that shit about my throat. Yeah, but I love I love making fun of y'all anyway. It brings yes, me great yes, you're all peace. sitting back counting. It your makes cash. me great yeah, peace know. to know that y'all can't tell the difference. Yes, yes. Well, I'm, I'm glad you entertained yourself and then sabotage yourself at the same time. It yeah, always seems worth it to me. Yeah. <laughs> I would rather have a bank account full of money, but I don't think that was. Do you have a? Is that way. the thing you're doing now? You're saying you, you, like you're, you're telling everybody you actually made money and the whole thing's a bunch of bullshit. You're not in bad shape. No, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, no I'm, you are in bad shape or you're not yeah, in bad shape. I, no, I'm, I, if I sell my house, I'll have some equity. We've talked about that. If I sell off my magic cards, I'll You'll probably have a little bit of equity. The there. Actually, I had a deal going early this week, but it did fall. You're through. not going to get it. About that. You're never going to say, um, you know what you'll do? You'll tell me what? you didn't sell it because you were too close. They meant too much to you. Well, I have an offer on it from sell the local game. Cost. I have an offer on it from the local game store right How now. Much? I just don't know if I'm going to take it. About fifty, and I think it's probably worth more. So I'm going to catalog it first. And you see get fifty thousand for that. Fifty dollars or fifty thousand. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just going to take fifteen hours to catalog it all and make sure I get as much as I can. That's the point. Yeah, well, I would agree. I would definitely tell you to do that. Jesus. Yeah, How big of a magic card do you have? Like when you flip the magic card table, were there any good ones there? You're kidding. Judge. Judge. <laughs> no, those are all jokes. Those are all I don't give a fuck about. <laughs> but but I've been collecting the game for 31 years, and uh, some of the cards that I bought 31 years ago are worth a dramatic amount of money. And so, whereas I, I don't want to part that. with them, I want to continue to work. I want to continue to make videos. I want to hold on to those cards for as long as I can because they are connected to my identity. Because the local game store, too. Yeah, that's absolutely too <laughs> true, too, by the way. Uh, I, I, and I want to sell them for the maximum amount, and right now is a down slope. <laughs> We've had a down slope since the end of 2022, and I'm waiting for the next. You, you, my, you, my honest opinion, Boogie. Yeah, go ahead. Hold on to them as long as humanly possible, because like money is really, really expensive right now. And yep. Inflation is going up. If yep. something were to happen, like I don't know, like a presidential change or something like that, and the U.S. dollar strengthens, you'll get more money out of them. Yep, that's my plan is to hold on to it to the. I, I want to see your. I, I want to see. I I, I, I want to see your. I hope your girlfriend gets him into like a divorce or something like that, and she bathes <laughs> in <laughs> stupid cards with her, with her with her new boyfriend you or whoever called in the stream. That'd be funny. You, you may swim swimming. You got, swimming you got fucking your trap daddy lighting oh, a cigar $10, with his thirty-one year old magic card. <laughs>
I have a single magic card in there worth about two grand. I'm looking. I it's bet right you. I, that right means you now. get five for it. Five hundred. That's the way it oh, usually the, the, works. Well, Basically, like a, baseball cards. That's, and the, that's, that's the street value of fucking magic cards. That's, I'm I'm, sure, you know, that's <laughs> the thing. That, that's the thing, Wings. Like I'm sure he's right as far as like with the document, but they never sell for what they say in the. They, Except they, they do. Go the to TCG Player right now, and you can see exactly what they sell for. Go for a uh, go for eBay. Yeah, but those are see those are like the, auction the, the prices. The ones that just sold. Yeah, those are auction prices and auction. They're not auction prices. They are prices. Now, if list you get seventy percent of what their like listed worth is, that's amazing. If you get fifty, that's not bad either. You get let, but you're more than likely gonna get less than that. Listen to me, I right now. Listen it. to me. Go to TCG Player right now. I, you will I, see. You I will see, see that, that a, a I'm Jews saying again, the card I'm talking about just for sold for one thousand six hundred. I'm saying you won't get. Go I get will because I have a TCG no, Player won't. store. No, you won't. I'm gonna sell it on I TCG Player. It. Guaranteed. Why wouldn't you tell, I? All right. Then you Why tell me the I? worth right before you sell them, right? And then when the deal's closed, don't dox yourself. You show me how much you sold them for, um, considering their worth prior to sell. And I want to see how close it is. I'll apologize if it's like well, really I'll probably I'll probably get seventy percent of value because that's the that's the general offer. Most people that buy for seventy percent. All right, you get seventy yeah, percent, then I apologize. Yeah, most people <laughs> most people when they sell in bulk can get about seventy okay. percent from. The, again, private dealers. If you try to sell for a store, they're trying to pay fifty percent. But as a general rule, when you sell to a private dealer, you expect to get seventy. You know what it is. You know what it is. You, you, you know you might be right, but I'm counting on the low cow factor, and you know what it means when it's low cow, it never goes the way you think it's going. You, you, yeah, you're, I you're mean, missing, the, you're missing a factor here, Tommy. The the home payment factor. When does he need an extra five hundred bucks that that two thousand dollar card might get him? Yeah, that's oh, yeah. true. Yeah, that's gotta, absolutely. He's got to buy some peyote or whatever the f he's doing this week. Because yeah. like when you Actually, get desperate, you're willing to take mescaline. less. Actually, it was mescaline, and it was great. Oh, I bet it was. It was fucking you know. fantastic. Hunters. Yeah, you can use the cards if they're worth that much money. Huh? Listen, oh. sweetheart, I can't pay you right now, but here's uh, here's my elf. <laughs> Here's my playset of Tarmogoyfs. Would you like to do a butt sex with me? Uh, thank, thank you guys in the chat. If you made it this fucking far, call Kingstar Gnome in the chat. Yeah, you know. <laughs> That's Boogie and Wings of Redemption, and they're both fucking goofballs that believe each other. And thank you very much, and good night. <laughs>